This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Yvonne Jones talks about cell-cell communication and how this can help us develop new drugs. Hello Yvonne. Hello. Why is cell-cell communication important to our health? Because our bodies are made up of millions and millions of cells and so obviously they all need to be able to communicate with each other and work out are they in the right place, doing the right thing at the right time, do they need to move to somewhere different, do they need to to multiply up, do they even need to die because they're not needed anymore. What happens when the signalling systems don't work properly? Well one example would be cancer. That's a case where signalling systems aren't working correctly in terms of telling cells not to just carry on growing and multiplying. A particular aspect that I'm currently working on is in the latter stages of cancer, in metastasis, when cancer cells start moving from that particular tissue where they've started growing to different tissues. So they're no longer staying where they should be. They're invading other parts of the body. That would be one example. Um, Another example would be where in the immune system perhaps we're not recognising that we've been infected by a particular organism so that the immune cells aren't spotting this fact and fighting off things fast enough. Could you tell us how cells communicate? The way that they do that is through receptors on their cell surfaces. So it's like they've got lots and lots of little aerials sticking out from their surface. Uh, but in this case they're proteins and what they're doing is waiting to to recognize and to to dock into uh, proteins either from neighboring cells or that are secreted by cells and sometimes over very long distances they build up gradients so they're acting as messages for cells to grow or divide or in the case of the cells that I'm interested in at the moment for metastasis for cancer cells, then they're determining this balance between whether a cell is, is sticking somewhere or, or whether it's being, being pushed away and, and moving off. And so they're, they're acting as guidance cues, almost like cellular sat-nav. What's the most important lines of research that have developed in the past five or ten years? I guess my view would be our ability to be able to look at these signalling systems right down to the atomic level detail. So it's a bit like understanding how a clock works or how a car works. It's all very well trying to describe it in words, but if you can actually see it and see the detail, you know, open up the bonnet and look inside and see all the different bits of a motor, then you can understand how it works. And of course, once you understand how it works, you've got some idea of how you can go in and manipulate it to to make it work correctly when things go wrong. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? Well, it's because if we can understand what these things really look like and how therefore they work, then we can go in and either block them, in the case of say a cell guidance cue that's, that's now acting to guide cells in cancer metastasis to where they they shouldn't be in the body. So we want to actually block it. So you could design a a drug, a small molecule that will go in, fit very specifically the the shape of the the antennae, the little structure on the cell surface, and block it. Or else, perhaps in in the case of uh, the repair of the the spinal cord when there's been um, serious injury, there the problem is that the cells the nerve cells aren't able to regenerate and grow through the scar. And if we can stop the signals that are stopping them and instead give them signals to encourage them to grow through the scar, then we can help regenerate after damage. How does your research fit into translational medicine within the department? Well, obviously what I'm doing is very basic research, um, but I can then discuss, I mean that's one of the exciting things about being in the Department of Medicine because I can discuss with my colleagues how my basic insights can feed through to the clinic. It takes obviously a long time but one example of something that we've been doing now for over a decade is looking at the way that 
the cells of the immune system are able to recognize when a cell is infected. And in particular, the moment we've been looking at how they recognize cancer cells uh, for melanoma. And that's work I'm doing with Enzo Chirundolo, who's uh, over in the Weatherall Institute for Molecular Medicine. He's a tumor immunologist. And so from taking my basic insights, he's now able to work to try to improve uh, anti-cancer tumor vaccines, which can be given to, to patients um, when, they, when they've got melanoma, is one of the ways of, of trying to combat it. Thank you, Yvonne.